Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today we are taking a look at Brooks Kepka's golf swing versus Bryson DeChambeau's golf swing because obviously there's a bit of a feud, a little bit of a spat, whatever you want to call it. They do not like each other very much at the moment. So let's take a look at their golf swings. I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear, are you team Brooks? Are you team Bryson? And which golf swing you prefer as well? Because, you know, they're very, very different golf swings. Two of the most powerful golfers in the world and, you know, very, very different, very different motions. So let's dive straight in. We're gonna first take a look at Brooks, then we'll have a look at Bryson, then we're gonna compare the two golf swings and obviously comment down below, who's your favorite? Who do you think has a better golf swing? Um, you know, what do you think of this whole debate, this whole kind of uh, social media feud between the two of them? let me know in the comments down below, reply to all your comments and make sure to like this video as well. So this is Brooks Kepka driver at this year's US Open. So here we have Brooks set up with the driver. First of all, we'll just run through his setup. I've done individual videos for both of these golfers, might do some more in future as well. Uh, Brooks at setup, quite a lot of knee bend. Now, Brooks used to work with Claude Harmon. I don't believe he works with Claude Harmon anymore. If you don't know who Claude Harmon is, well, Claude Harmon III, uh, he's Butch Harmon's son who works with a lot of the best players in the world, including Dustin Johnson. So here we have quite a lot of knee bend at the setup for Brooks and good posture, good spine angle, looks really good there. His, uh, his alignment's good except for his shoulder alignment is slightly open to the target. Now, Brooks does like to hit a fade, so that is probably why. But a lot of knee bend, but the hips are still nicely stacked over the ankles, so the angles are pretty good. Now, let's just take this club back slowly. Nice, big, wide takeaway, keeps it low to the ground. If we pause it here, parallel to the ground, well, you know, that is a very closed club face. That is not even square actually probably at that point that's actually pretty closed very very closed club face um, big one piece takeaway really like that big wide takeaway I probably would recommend trying to get the club more closed than open in the takeaway most golfers have the club a little bit more well more open than square at this position more with like the toe pointed up at the sky um, Brooks has some unusual leg movement in his golf swing as well, so just bear that in mind. We'll take a look at that as we play through this. As we play it to the top, brings the club back in a really nice plane. That right elbow starts to fold. Look at the lower body. doesn't really turn anymore. Kind of stop turning, and he just holds it there as he coils up through his spine to the top of the backswing. And that is one way Brooks gets a lot of power. Here we have it paused at the top. And again, notice how the lower body really hasn't moved pretty much since parallel to the ground. And that has enabled him to create this huge coil, huge wind up in his golf swing. So here we have, well, just a few things to run through. Let's run through them from the ground up. Really interestingly to note, actually, at this position, it looks like Brooks has a lot of weight on his toes. His, actually, if you look at his right heel, almost looks a little bit up in the air, which is very unusual because you'd probably try and get golfers to load into their right heel in the top of the back swing position. Also, Brooks, very, in order to understand how Brooks generates so much power, another way he generates this power is he has a very, very flexed right arm at the top of the back swing. It's quite a narrow swing in some respects, but he uses that right arm as a lever to create power in the downswing. Also, we can see that bowed left wrist, closed club face, uh, hands just above the shoulder plane. Also, we'll be able to talk a little bit more about the arm position when we have a look at a front on look at Brooks Kepka's golf swing, because that left arm does have some bend in it too. Now, as we start to play this down, club's going to shallow out really nicely, pulls those hands and arms back out in front of him. It's a very strong golf swing with the upper body. Pulls them back in front of him and then look at the club face. We pause it parallel to the ground. A few really interesting things are, ha interesting things are happening here. 
there's a few really, really, really good things. Let's just run through those first. The right elbow, very right arm, right elbow, very connected to the body. You get that beautiful triangle of daylight through the arms. But look at his uh, his right foot. His right heel is very, very up off the ground. He's kind of jumped up off the ground quite early with that right foot. And right legs, or his legs are actually both pretty straight, which is slightly unusual in this position. You'd probably say you'd want a little bit more squat ready to push up kind of into impact in this position. Also, club face does match his spine angle really nicely. But the club is actually quite high up in this position. Now, Brooks does get his hands. If we play this down into impact, he releases. He's, he, he's done rotating from this position. If he plays it into impact, he's just releasing the arms and the upper body down into the ball. Now, he gets those hands quite high, quite an upright uh, club plane through, uh, through impact. Um, so really, really high hands there. Very good impact position though. If you look at his hips, his shoulders are open to the target. Posture is pretty good. Right arm still connected, starting to release the right arm. Uh, it's just his lower body looks like, I think, you know, it'd be interesting to see if he could maintain a bit more flexion in his lower body till a bit later in the golf swing um, to then release it. It may even create more power for him. But he is one of the best players in the world, and you know who am I to judge? Incredibly powerful golf swing, but it's really that power almost comes a little bit more from the upper body as well in his golf swing. So let's play this through impact. See how he extends this right arm so hard, then through impact uses that as a lever, but the body kind of stays still until the clubs start to work up, and then he comes through that beautiful balance finish and that ball is just a beautiful high fade. Let's just play this swing through once or twice for you guys so you can take a look at this. It's, um, yeah, it's a pretty interesting golf swing. I can't really think of another one like it. I would say he's quite unique in a lot of the things he does in his golf swing. I would bear in mind, like, whilst watching this, really look at, he kind of, the upper body really is where he kind of muscles this golf swing. He really does use the upper body and the arms quite a lot to really muscle the ball. Um, lower body doesn't do a huge amount. He actually gets into some, some fairly unusual lower body positions um, in this golf swing. But, you know, it is an incredible golf swing. Gets the club into some great positions on the way down. There's a lot of good things happening there. Let's take a look now at his golf swing with driver from front on. And well, let's just play this back a few times. So we'll play it for all. First of all, from the setup. Here we have it paused at the setup. And as he takes this club back, just watch his hips. His hips are actually going to shift laterally, laterally to the right. Gets his spine angle a little bit more upright. If we pause it at the top, pause it here that club perfectly parallel basically the hips have moved laterally into that load into that right side a little bit he hasn't maintained his spine angle as well as we might see bryson do in a minute and then as we play this down he's going to shift those hips back to the left laterally as he plays this club down and if we pause it at parallel to the ground Look how the grip is kind of almost towards the ball. The grip from this position isn't really going to move much. He's going to have to release the arms quite a lot from this position. It's fairly narrow-ish goal swing on the way down. And then as he comes through to impact, watch how he that left arm moves up. Look at that bend in that left arm. If we pause it at impact, that is a very, very bent left elbow in that golf swing. That is quite an unusual position to get yourself in in this golf swing. Um, let me know what you think of it down below. Probably wouldn't be the way I'd recommend doing things. You can kind of see from his arms how, how much he's really straining with them, how much he's using his arms in this golf swing to muscle that ball because he is a very, very strong guy. And as we play this through, extends the right arm, keeps that bend in the left arm. Um, and then the weight shifts slowly onto his left side as he comes through to that balance finish. Let's just play this back once or twice for you guys. 
Let me know, by the way, guys, if I've missed anything, you know, really important you think is valuable there or, you know, just comment down below. Let me know. I'd love to hear from you guys as we just watch this back a few times. You can really look on the way down how he's really using the arms primarily to generate a lot of that power. He shifts weight left and he does push up off the ground maybe a little bit early, but then it's the arms that are really releasing um, really those biceps, those huge mus muscled arms are just releasing through the golf ball. And now we are going to take a look at Bryson DeChambeau's golf swing. First of all, let's take a look at his driver swing from down the line. Now this again at the US Open where Bryson and Brooks both played pretty well for the most part. Uh, Bryson obviously didn't have the best back nine on Sunday. But here paused at uh, address, good setup position. Notice a lot straighter legs than Brooke de Brooks had, definitely there. As we play this club back, big wide takeaway. Pause it kind of parallel to the ground here. Notice how high this golf club is parallel to the ground because uh, he has such high hands and no real wrist set at this point. Very, very late wrist set in his golf swing. A lot of turn in the lower body in Bryson's golf swing, more hip turn, certainly on the way back and bigger shoulder turn as well. As we start to play this back to the top, again, the body, the lower body turns early but then stops. This is important to understand the sequencing of the golf swing. As we pause it, we're going to pause it just short of the top because Bryson fires the lower body as he's kind of still coming to the top of the golf swing with the upper body in order to create that separation from lower body to upper body to create that power. But if we have it paused here, just parallel with the ground, notice he's loaded into that right side, quite different, a lot more weight and pressure going through his right heel. That left heel up off the ground. Notice how you can see a lot more of Bryson's belt buckle and his belt from this position, a lot bigger hip turn bigger shoulder turn, very different arm structure as well, getting the arms quite a lot deeper than Brooks. He does that by, he gets that left arm kind of flat across his chest, arms or hands are just above the shoulder plane, gets the right elbow, not quite as bent as Brooks does, um, I would say just under 90 degree angle there. Gets starting to get a lot of wrist hinge at the top. Also bear in mind these guys have very different grips. Bryson has a fairly weak left hand grip and also uses hugely chunky Jumbo Max grips. Uh, Brooks has a quite strong grip in his um, in his hands. And as we play, start to play this down, we're going to see that he's going to start to plant that left foot as the club just reaches the top and parallel and he's going to rotate the lower body really, really hard. Keeps the arms very deep, club in behind him, shallowing out as he rotates so hard. If we pause it parallel to the ground here, it's a pretty damn good position to be in. Very good posture. Bryson, for me, probably has one of the best golf swings in terms of posture and biomechanics on the, well, probably in the world, I was going to say on the PGA Tour, but maintains his spine angle and his posture incredibly well throughout this golf swing. Um, notice how he keeps his right heel planted a lot more than Brooks does. A very, very different leg work in this golf swing as he rotates through. But look at the right arm again at this position, very, very connected to the body as he comes down into impact and pulls the impact great impact position again kind of similar to Brooks in some ways but not in others they both have their hips and shoulders open to the target I would probably say Bryson's look a bit more open to the target than Brooks slightly very different lower body positions though notice again how Bryson's rolling onto the inside of his right foot um, very very different way than Brooks does Brooks kind of jumping up a little bit more off the ground Bryson rolling onto the inside of that left foot, that, sorry, that right foot. And again, very connected with the right arm at impact. And again, if we pull, if we start to play this through, the, the body doesn't really rotate too much from here. It's really the arms releasing, you know, notice how the right arm straightens through impact, 
releasing the club and then the upper body starts to rotate as he keeps the he holds on to that club he really doesn't really let it release over very much um it can be why you see him block them out to the right a little bit sometimes but you know again one of the best drivers of golf ball in the world and he controls that club face beautifully as he comes through to that balance finish let's just play this back a few times for you guys it's definitely a very, very different golf swing. Again, if I've missed anything in this, please do comment down below. Love to hear from you guys. Brooks Kepka versus Bryson DeChambeau. What team are you guys? There's a lot of, you know, I just love the biomechanics of this golf swing. I think, you know, posture, hips, shoulders, everything like that. They work really, really beautifully. Arms very connected to the body on the way down. It's a very, it's a much wider golf swing as well, wider than kind of Brooks is, especially on the way down. And before we compare these swings, we just have to have a one last look at Bryson DeChambeau from front on with the driver. And this is quite interesting actually. I think Bryson's made some changes here. There's a few really interesting things to take a look at in this swing. So, as we have it paused at setup here, a lot of weight on his left side. Now, he do, he will start to load that weight into his right side, but uh, it has set up a lot of weight loaded onto his, his left side. He doesn't have the, interestingly enough, his feet aren't that wide apart here. Um, they don't appear to be, you know, just wider than shoulder width apart. Uh, look at his head position to uh, to his shoulder angle. His head is actually tilted, turned slightly to the right. That is because it's going to help him get a bigger shoulder turn in the backswing. And as we do play this back, big wide takeaway, no real wrist set very very late reset as we start to get to the top again i'm actually going to pause it just short of the top and this is a really interesting angle to take a look at bryson's swing the there's a lot of moving parts i think the one thing you could maybe criticize about bryson you know making these swing changes to his golf swing is there's a lot more moving parts now than there used to be. I watched Bryson play at the Open Championship in 20, 2017 when Jordan Spieth won. And Bryson was possibly the most impressive ball striker I saw that day, including I watched Tiger Woods. He was unbelievably impressive and consistent. And I think a big part of that was his golf swing was a lot simpler back then than it is now. In order to create all this power, he's, you know, the left heels come up off the ground, the right knee, sorry, left knee has moved in a lot more. There's more turn in the lower body on the way back, less pivot. Um, you know, there's a lot more moving parts, a lot more wrist hinge at the top, arms are a lot deeper at the top, bigger turn. All of these things are going to play a part when it comes to consistency in the golf swing. As we start to play this down, also bear in mind before we start to play this down, look at that shoulder turn. That is crazy shoulder turn. And, you know, that's really more shoulder turn because of how much hip turn he has. But as we start to play this down, he's going to stamp that left heel down into the ground, using the ground really well. Shifts that weight left back onto his left side and pushes up off the ground as he comes down into impact really interesting impact position here um you know he's pushed up off the ground again you can actually see how his head is in a similar position you know with the head turned to the right that it was um at the very start of the swing at address notice how he's released the club a lot earlier than brooks probably you know brooks has a bit of shaft lean with his driver which i wouldn't recommend he has, you know, the hands a bit further ahead. Bryson's left arm a lot straighter than Brooks's, and he's hitting up on this driver. And as we play this through, releases that right arm. Really, you know, there's so much speed and turn there. He spins out. No real, no real flip in the hands though. Keeps the hands and arms uh, in front of him, but spins out with that left foot as he comes into that finished position. Now, guys, are you ready for this? We're going to compare Bryson DeChambeau's golf swing with Brooks Kepka's golf swing. 
I mean, they're such crazy, crazy different golf swings. Let's just play them back and take a look. I'm going to try and sync them up as well because they're obviously different tempos, different speeds. Um, so I'm going to try and sync them up for you guys. So at address, notice Bryson has much, much straighter legs than Brooks does. Brooks, a lot more knee bend, a lot, lot more knee bend. Also, Bryson's hands a lot higher. Um, Bryson's alignment probably a little bit better than Brooks just because Brooks has that left, uh, his shoulders aligned slightly left. As we take this club back and pause it parallel to the ground, both really good takeaways. Both keep a very, very square club face on the way back. Bryson has the hands a lot higher, so the club face and club is a lot higher when it reaches parallel to the ground. And he doesn't have the face quite as closed as Brooks does. Brooks has a very, very closed club face. Again, remember, they, uh, Brooks has uh, a lot stronger grip, which will explain this as well. Now, as we play these to the top, notice how Bryson gets much, much more turn in the lower body and the hips. You can see a lot more of Bryson's belt buckle as we pause it to the top. Whereas Brooks's lower body hasn't really moved since parallel to the ground. It kind of holds that position and because of that, doesn't get quite as much shoulder turn as Bryson does in his golf swing. Bryson obviously has the club much more across the line, whereas Brooks has the club a little bit more laid off. Brooks has a much stronger club face than Bryson. Bryson's slightly weaker, more traditional club face. Very different arm structure with the right arm. Bryson's right arm very away from his body. Brooks's right arm much more connected, much more connected to his body, but more bend in it. So Bryson's creating more width with that right arm. Brooks has it a little bit narrower, but more connected to his body. Two very different ways of doing it. Now, as we start to play these clubs down, very different ways of getting the club back out in front of them. Bryson, you know, rotates and shallows the club a bit more. Brooks pulls that club down more in front of him. And if we pause it parallel to the ground, very different positions. Some similarities in terms of if you look at the connection with the right arm to the body, very, very similar. But, you know, if you look at the lower body, very different lower body positions. Brooks coming down from a much steeper angle down on top of the ball with a more square club face. Bryson a little bit shallower and a little bit more open face. If we play this into impact, again, at impact, great positions for the two of them, great connection with the right arm to the body, open hips, open shoulders. But if you look at the lower body, Brooks's right heel up off the ground, a lot weight on his toes. Bryson has rolled onto the inside of his right foot, transferring his weight through the ball. I would personally prefer to have Bryson's leg structure, lower body movement in the golf swing to Brooks overall, two very, very different ways of doing it. And then as we play this through, both of them extending the right arm, but Brooks really just using the arms to muscle the ball, whereas Bryson's kind of keeps the arms in front of him and turns to, to in order to maintain control of that club face, keeps the arms nicely in front of him as he rotates to the bounce finish. And I'll just leave these to play back for a second for you guys. Let me know if there's anything else I've missed. Two very different ways of doing it. Very, very different lower body movement. Different arm structures at the top. I personally prefer the movements of Bryson's lower body. That's kind of, in a lot of ways, the biggest differences to me in these golf swings is actually the lower body movement. Bryson a lot more hip turn. Um, whether you like that or not, it can lead to you know too much hip turn. It's it's another moving part. So another another thing to think about there. But you know I love the the mechanics of Bryson DeChambeau's golf swing is probably almost second to none, really incredible biomechanics of his golf swing. Brooks is a little bit more of a kind of using the upper body to generate that power to really hit the ball with those arms, really strong guy. Both of these guys incredibly, incredibly strong. If I had to choose a golf swing, I'd probably go Bryson's. In my mind, Bryson's, even though he's put on all this weight, all this bulk and increased his speed so much and hits the ball so hard, 
actually the biomechanics of Bryson's golf swing would be more sustainable to your overall body. He's not putting as much strain and as much pressure through certain areas of the body. Brooks puts a lot of strain through that bowed left wrist and he has had left wrist problems and I think surgeries as well and also through Brooks's left elbow as well and possibly even his right elbow as well using he uses those as levers in the golf swing to create that power but you know putting a lot of strain and pressure through there over a long period of time and you know Brooks again also had knee problems in his golf swing and you can maybe see some of that from uh you know, from the the lower body movement he gets in his swing. But really, really interesting golf swings. Guys, comment down below. Are you Team Brooks? Are you Team Bryson? Love to hear from you guys. If there's anything I've missed in this video, let me know. Comment down below. Give it a like. Subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Grip it and rip it.